welcome back to my channel. I'm Honey. And for those who are new here, I've been vlogging about the benefits we are getting in Canada during the pandemic. So uh, I started with how to apply for EI and how to apply for the CRV and other benefits that we are getting during the pandemic. So for today... So for today... I will be just updating you about what is going on now with the CRV since initially it was just for 16 weeks and then now it's extended for 24 weeks and then just yesterday they announced again that they're going to extend it for another 4 weeks which will make it into 28 weeks in total. So basically if you've applied since March 15, you have until September 26 to enjoy or to be to get the CERB. So after September 26, you will be transitioning into the approved EI or the EI CERB sort of, which has uh, less qualifications so that it will be more inclusive for most Canadians. And for those who will not be eligible for the new EI, you can apply for the three other benefits which they made available for the Canadians as well, which is the Canada Recovery Benefit or the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit and the Canada Recovery Caregiving Benefits. So for on September 27, this will now be the new employment insurance. So they have uh, established a minimum unemployment rate for the EI program of 13.1% across Canada. Individuals in EI regions with an employment rate lower than 13.1% will have their EI benefits calculated on the basis of 13.1% rate while those in regions with a higher rate will have their benefits calculated using the actual higher rate. So normally the unemployment rate in the region in which a claimant resides at the time they file their claim determines the number of hours of insurable employment that claimant needs to be accumulated in their qualifying period to be eligible for the EI regular benefits ranging from 420 to 700 hours. The number of weeks of EI regular benefits claimant may be entitled to, which is ranging from 14 to 45 weeks. And the number of best weeks of earnings that will be used to establish their weekly benefit rate ranging from 14 to 22. So the EI system uses regional, regional unemployment rates to determine access to EI regular benefits given that it is gener generally more difficult for individuals to find new work when unemployment is higher. So, in recognition that the pandemic has negatively impacted labor markets in ways that extended beyond traditional measures of unemployment, this measure will set a uniform eligibility requirement for EI regular benefits of 420 hours of insurable employment before the hours credit is applied, provide a minimum entitlement of 26 weeks of regular benefits, and set 14 as the number of best weeks of earnings used in the calculation of the of the weekly be benefit rate. So that's the um, significance of minimum unemployment rate to 13.1%. So as and now they are also allowing Canadians with 120 hours of insurable work or more to qualify for benefits by providing a temporary one-time credit of 300 insurable hours for those claiming EI regular benefits and 480 insurable hours for those claiming EI special benefits, which is the maternity, parental sickness, compassionate care, and family. So basically, if you work 120 hours, then you will qualify for EI regular benefits and EI special benefits, which is the maternity, paternal, parental, sickness, compassionate care, and family. Also, they are freezing the EI premium rate for employees at the 2020 level of 1.58 per $100 of insurable earnings for two years. And the rate for employers will also remain unchanged at 2.21 cents per 100 of insurable earnings. 
so there won't be increase in insurance premiums for two years actually and they are also implementing temporary measures to support self-employed fish harvesters who rely on EI fishing benefits in the off season so these measures will allow EI fishing benefits for these workers to be calculated using either their fishing earnings for their card claim or their fishing earnings from their claim for the same season from the previous year, whichever is higher. As of September 27, if you are eligible for EI benefits, you will receive a minimum benefit rate of $400 per week or $240 per week for extended parental benefits. So that's the minimum benefit rate that you will be receiving per week if you are eligible for EI. If you are not eligible for EI benefits, you may be eligible for these three other benefits that they came up with, which is the Canada Recovery Benefit and the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit, or CRSB, and the Canada Recovery Caregiving Benefit, or the CRCB. So what is the Canada Recovery Benefit, or CRB? For the Canada Recovery Benefit, they will provide $400 per week for up to 26 weeks 26 weeks to workers who are self-employed or are not eligible for the EI and who still require income support and who are available and looking for work. So this benefit would support Canadians whose income has dropped or not returned due to COVID-19. So it will be available to residents in Canada who are at least 15 years old and have a valid social insurance number or C number, have stopped working due to the COVID-19 pandemic and are available and looking for work and um, are working and have had reduction in their employment or self-employment income for reasons related to COVID-19. And for those who are not eligible for employment insurance and for those who had employment and or self-employment income of at least $5,000 in 2019 or in 2020 and have not quit their job voluntarily. So this benefit will start on September 27 for one year. The other benefit is the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit or the CRSB. So they will provide $500 per week for up to two weeks for workers who are sick or must self-isolate for reasons related to COVID-19. So this benefit would be available to residents in Canada who are at least 15 years of age and have a valid social insurance number and those workers employed or self-employed at the time of the application and workers who earned at least $5,000 in 2019 or in 2020. So this Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit is solely for those who are asked to self-isolate or are sick with reasons related to COVID-19. So uh, it's $500 per week for up to two weeks. So this one will start also on September 27. And then we have the Canada Recovery Caregiving Benefit or the CRCB. So the Canada Recovery Caregiver Benefit will be effective from September 27, 2020 for one year and provide $500 per week for up to 26 weeks again per household to eligible Canadians. So in order to be eligible for the Canada Recovery Caregiving Benefit, individuals would need to reside in Canada, be at least 15 years of age on the first day of the, of the period for which they apply for the benefit, have a valid social insurance number, employed or self-employed on the day immediately preceding the period for which the application is made, have earned at least $5,000 in 2019 or in 2020, have been unable to work for at least 60% of their normally scheduled work within a given week because of one of the following conditions. They must take care of a child who is under 12 years of age on the first day of the period for which the benefit is claimed because their school or daycare is closed or operates under an alternative schedule for reasons related to the COVID-19 pandemic, who cannot attend school or daycare under the advice of a medical professional due to be at high risk if they contract COVID-19 
or because a caregiver who usually provides care is not available for reasons related to the COVID-19 pandemic or they must provide care to a family member with a disability or a dependent because their day program or care facility is closed or operates under an alternative schedule for reasons related to COVID-19 or who cannot attend their day program or care facility under the advice of a medical professional due to being at high risk if they contract COVID-19 or because a caregiver who usually provides care is not avail available for reasons related to the COVID-19 pandemic. So this benefit is not, not to not be in receipt of paid leave from an employer in respect of the same week. So you should not be receiving paid leave from an employer in respect, in respect of the same week and you should not be in receipt, in receipt of the CRB, the EI Emergency Response Benefit, the Canada Recovery Benefit, the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit, Short-Term Disability Benefits, Workers' Compensation Benefits or any EI Benefits or Quebec Parental Insurance Plan benefits in respect of the same week. So this benefit again will start on September 27 uh, for one year. Canadians already receiving benefits through Service Canada will be transitioned to the EI program once they have received the maximum CRB benefits for which they are entitled if they are EI eligible and continue to need income support. Canadians who are currently receiving the CRB from the Canada Revenue Agency who believe they are entitled to EI will need to apply through Service Canada after September 26 when your CRB is over. And the Canada Revenue Agency would administer the Canada Recovery Benefits and Canadians would be able to apply through the CRA. In the coming weeks, the CRA will provide more details on how and when Canadians can get ready to apply at www.canada.ca slash coronavirus for the three other benefits. So I will be updating you uh, when these details are available. So that is it for today. I hope I was able to answer the questions that were sent to me or the comments that I received about the CRB update. Please subscribe and click the bell button so you'll be notified when I post more videos about the updates. I hope you are well and safe wherever you are right now. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Be safe.